question before I tell you my story and about my mission to help save lives from our number one killer, which is heart disease. How many of you in this room have heart disease or know someone who has heart disease? Please raise your hand. Yep, that's about what the national statistics tell us. You know, it's close to, I would say, getting close to 50% of all people in the United States have some form of heart disease. That's a lot of people. So I want you to bear in mind as I talk to you today that we have, yes, a lot of concern for this coronavirus, right? Because it's happening in our country right now. But remember this, in the United States, every single day, 2,200 people die from heart disease. And this is a disease that is totally preventable. So let me tell you my story. First, I am so proud to be a seasoned senior. I am now 65 years old. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> 66 next month. And, but let me tell you what happened to me when I was 56 years old, which is 10 years ago now, right, Dylan? I was a psychotherapist working in Houston, Texas, seeing my patients in my office. And I had just said goodbye to my last patient for the day and I was getting ready to pack up and go home, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, I started sweating profusely from head to toe. I became dizzy, and I became totally nauseous. And my husband can attest to this, I don't get nauseous, and I don't vomit. I just, I, I just haven't done it since fifth grade. So I knew something was really wrong. So I was sitting on my couch, and I was talking to the father of one of my adolescent clients on the phone, and I just said, I have to go. And I hung up the phone, and I passed out. I came to, I don't know, maybe a few minutes later, and I said to myself, oh my God, I think I'm having a heart attack, because I knew the symptoms were different for women. You know, we don't get this chest pain usually, or, or I didn't have any pain, I just felt those symptoms. So I got to the hospital, thank God, I uh, got the paramedics got to me in time, took me into the uh, emergency room, and I see this man I've never seen before, you know, the cardiologist is there to look at me, and I looked at him and I said, please don't let me die. And he looked me right back in the eye and he said, don't worry, we won't. Well, his promise was almost broken that day. When they got me into that cath lab and they inserted the catheter, into my what was a 99% blocked right coronary artery. I chose that very moment to vomit. And guess what happened when I did that? I don't remember, I was out. Well, the catheter moved and dissected my aorta. That is not a good thing to have happened. So the surgeon, the head surgeon of this hospital down in Texas, ran past my husband, right, Dylan? and said, get your family here. I give her maybe a 20% chance of surviving. I was in super critical condition. I coded three times that day, but I survived. And I'm here almost 10 years later now to tell you how I've managed to survive. Because nobody, nobody told me what I could do so that this would never happen to me again. I had to become my own investigator and I had to become one who studied the literature on heart disease and how to reverse and prevent it. But that I did. And I was very lucky because I had a sister who was a nurse practitioner at the famous Cleveland Clinic. And she happened to know this guy by the name of Caldwell Esselstyn, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. And he wrote a book, and I'll show it to you real quick, called Prevent and reverse heart disease. So in my weakened state, I ran out to the bookstore. This was probably a couple months into being home and recovering. And I got this book and I read it in one day. And I said to myself, that's it. I'm changing my diet. I'm going to eat whole foods and I'm not gonna use oil because I never, never want to end up in that emergency room or operating suite again. And guess what? 10 years later, I had a nuclear scan done by my cardiologist. He's a very famous guy. He's here in Chicago. We're so lucky. Dr. Kim Williams. 
past president of the American College of Cardiology, who, by the way, himself has been plant-based, as well as 19 members of his cardiology doctor staff down in Rush at downtown. But he said, let's take a look and see what's happening to your heart, because I had to have a bypass surgery done where they took a, a vein from my leg and bypassed the diseased right coronary artery. And then they fixed my aorta too, thank goodness. So what did the scan show? To my surprise, my right coronary artery is back to normal. It is providing all of the nutrients and oxygen to my heart, and the bypass surgery, the one from my leg that was helping out my heart, gone, no longer needed. So I have no heart disease. Now, people say to me, that's a miracle. And I say, yeah, it's a miracle, but you know what the real miracle is? It's the food. Everything that you ate today will prevent, or if you, or reverse. If you have heart disease, we'll reverse it. And it's not just my opinion, but it's the opinion of some pretty famous researchers over the years, going back, oh my goodness, I'm gonna go back to the 1980s when a doctor in California, Dr. Dean Ornish, did a six, five or six year study where he looked at people with heart disease and put them in two groups, so it was a real experiment. One of the groups, they had to eat like what I eat, the low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet without any oil. He also threw in some exercise and meditation, which is a good thing. And then his control group, the other group, ate a more American-style diet. I mean, the results are crazy. Let me just tell you what they found. So after a year, those people that were eating well, they had a 37.2% reduction in their bad LDL cholesterol. Now let's compare that with the other group that didn't change their diet that much. They only had a 6% reduction. They were supposed to be healthier. Um, you know what angina is, everybody? You know that pain you get when your, your uh, heart is not able to pump enough blood and nutrients to your heart? So the people in the experimental group who ate the plant-based diet, they had it was, uh, let's see, a 91% reduction in the frequency of these episodes. 91%, that is crazy. Now the people who did eat that diet had a 165% increase in angina pain. So it's just fascinating to read the literature. And again, Caldwell Esselstyn did studies at the Cleveland Clinic. People that eat the way I do, we can actually heart attack proof ourselves for the most part. In Caldwell Esselstyn study at the Cleveland Clinic, I think only 2% of the people that were eating the way I eat had any other, had, had any other heart problems. But the control group, 68% had further cardiac events. So as they say, the proof's in the pudding. <laughs> so, you might have some questions like, why don't we use oil? Are you curious about that? Because what we, what, what's, the, what's the, um, the idea about oil? What have we heard about olive oil? In the, in, uh, in the media, you know, what did you learn about it? What is it? Anybody? Let's shout it out. Go ahead. It's good for you. It's good for you. It's heart healthy. Guess what? I hate to break your bubble there, but it is not. It's actually 8 to 10 percent of saturated fat, which is the same saturated fat you're going to find in a piece of meat. Now, what does that have to do with heart disease? Well, heart disease is all about plaque building in our arteries. So when you're eating fat like that, and especially animal fat, so let's make a distinction, animal fat will build up plaque in your arteries. And it starts in childhood. I mean, it's younger and younger now. We know that kids are starting to get, you know, hardened arteries. That's pretty scary. So, let me tell you about a healthy artery. So in a healthy artery, we have this lining inside of our Inside of that artery, it's called the endothelial cell lining. Has anyone ever heard that word before? Sure. A lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So what that does is, if you have a healthy artery that's not blocked and caked with plaque, your body is, is going to uh, make something called nitric oxide, which gets pushed into your arteries. And what that nitric oxide does, it opens up your, the walls of your artery, keeps them wide open so blood can flow freely through it to get to your heart. 
So we want to protect those endothelial cells by eating a plant-based diet. The opposite of doing that is that you can't produce nitric oxide, and your endothelial cells can't produce that wonderful gas that keeps your arteries slippery like a, like a slide. So that's why we avoid oil. So I want to um, sort of open this up to some questions that you might have, um, and just to get some thoughts about what it was like if you hadn't eaten this way so much before. What was lunch like? Let's start with that. What was the lunch like? Did you enjoy it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Did, what, did you miss anything having this lunch? Did you miss having meat or chicken or fish? No. No? Okay. Yes, sir. When they made the, the, the first thing with the beans, you know, and all that, and they put tahini in there, when we buy tahini, it has oil in it. It's, it's just from the sesame seeds and it rises to the top. Yeah. That's part of the sesame seeds. Is that, that oil okay for you? I don't eat personally that much of that because I eat a very low fat whole food diet. So I can make this one, that wonderful dressing that Karen made without any tahini. It tastes just as good. Karen? And when I buy the tahini and I see that oil on top, Take it off. I pour it out. Yeah. Yeah. So the sesame seed, you know, it gets a little thicker, a little pastier, but you just add a little water or something to it. It's fine. So I will, just like on peanut butter or anything that has that natural oils in it that comes from the nuts or the seeds, you can just pour it right off. That's where it helps a little bit. Yes. At, the time of your heart, at the time of your heart attack, were you happy? I was not. And thank you for asking that question. So, um, I, oh, the question, I'm sorry. I put the microphone on. The question was, at the time of my heart attack, was I heavier, physically heavier? Did I have more weight on me? And the answer is N-O, I did not. I exercised five times a week at a minimum. Swimming, aerobics, I kayaked, I ran. What else did I do? <laughs> you name it, I did it. Swim. Swim, yeah, I, I mean, I was an avid exerciser. And I thought I was eating a heart-healthy, Mediterranean-style diet, which I did, which included fish, Olive oil, okay, but those are foods that, while they may help a little bit in decreasing your risk for heart disease, they do nothing to prevent or reverse it. Actually, there was a study done in France, the Neo Diet Art Study. This was back in the 1990s, and they found that 25% of the people on the Mediterranean style diet in that group, they had further cardiac events, including death, within four years. So while it stopped a few people from dying or developing their disease, it was progressive. Eating a whole food plant-based diet, you stop it in its tracks. If you don't put that stuff into your arteries, you can't clog them. Yes. Did you have high blood pressure or any warnings before the heart attack? So, good question. Did I have high blood pressure or any warnings before the heart attack? So, um, I had a slightly elevated blood pressure I would say uh, under 140, but it wasn't, you know, crazy high, but a little bit as I got older, it got a little higher. Um, in terms of warning signs, you know, there were a few signs, and I want everybody to hear these beforehand. Dale and I were um, at a, a friend's wedding in Baltimore, and we had gone out for our run that day. I was running at that time, remember Dale? Yeah, my husband's an avid runner. He still runs a lot, a lot more than me. Um, and we were running, and I got, I got tired, and I had to stop running, and that never happened. And so I stopped, and I went, oh, maybe I'm just not feeling so well. But I had a little bit of fatigue before it happened. So if you ever have a change like that, and you just start to feel like, I just don't feel right, I'm just always tired, that can be a sign that your heart's not getting enough nutrients and oxygen, which is what was happening. You know, so I'm exerting myself running really fast, and it, I can't pump the blood into my heart, uh, my heart. So I think that was what was the fatigue was all about. But that was it. Until that day it happened, that was the only warning sign. Was your cholesterol low? Or my cholesterol was 175, and I was on a little bit of cholesterol medication at that time. Now the recommendation by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn from the Cleveland Clinic is trying to keep your total cholesterol below 150 and to keep the bad cholesterol, he said 80, but now that it's even come down lower, it's like keep it below 60. So when I changed, changed to this diet, I started at 175, my total cholesterol, within two months, it was 105. 105, and my bad cholesterol was down to 60. 
And I have maintained that. It's never changed. It's been that good forever. So the, diet, the food works. It really does keep your arteries healthy and it keeps you well. Anybody else? Yes. We've been here for three years. And finding a plant-based diet doctor that's really serious <laughs> uh, is difficult. Yes. And so we've gone through several so far. Doctors who have gone to school and have not studied nutrition the way that those books describe, and yet they talk down to you because they're not, you're not a doctor. So you must have had a difficult time convincing people that oil is bad, even with all those books, because we, we're having that problem. So we're learning the hard way that when you describe oil, there are about 200 olives in that bottle of oil. <laughs> the condensate, the amount of just a little bit of that raises your, your problems tremendously. You can have an olive or two or three or even four, but um, not a, a oil. You bring up a good point that I'd like to make, that you know, the word whole, and eating a whole food plant-based diet means minimally or not processed. Right. Everyone knows that olive oil, any kind of oil, is processed. So you're not eating the whole food. You're getting absolutely zero nutritional benefit from that oil. Eat an olive if you want some, something to taste like an olive. You don't need the oils. Don't need the oil. uh, but let me just say a little bit about doctors. So there is a brand new specialty in the United States. I don't know. Let's see how the show of hands. Who's heard of the College of Lifestyle Medicine? Okay, okay. let me tell you about this, because I'm involved with them in a project right now. So this is uh, just like any other specialty, like radiology or orthopedics, if they are lifestyle medicine specialists. My physician, my general physician, is a Dr. Ashwani Garg in Lincolnwood. Now, I know that's a long way from here. But it's a long way for me, too, but I drive to see him because he's that good. But he is certified, he is board certified in lifestyle medicine. What does that mean? It means he took the oath to become a physician very seriously, and Hippocrates, the father of physicians or medicine, said long time ago, let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. And that's how lifestyle medicine doctors practice. They treat diseases by prescribing food. Can you believe it? They don't have a, they have a recipe, uh, they have a, a, a prescription pad, and it says, eat vegetables. <laughs> so their goal is to get you off of the medications that you know the pharmaceutical companies are getting rich on, keeping us hooked on them, because you don't need them when you eat this way. You can reduce your amounts that you take, even for diabetes, type 2 diabetes, let's be specific that eating this way reduces the risk that they need for the medication, and for many people, they come off of it completely. And it's simply with the food. So look for doctors, you know, I think for anyone who understands the importance. Now, physicians are not trained in nutrition. Do you know how many hours of nutrition education they get in medical school? Maybe an hour. And it's usually sponsored by, you know, the dairy industry or somebody who's gonna come in and tell them what to say. So they don't really know. But um, I just participated in a project with the College of Lifestyle Medicine. We are pitching a television show called um, you know, A Healthy Prescription. So they've been all over the country. They came here to Chicago and I was interviewed and four other people. We're gonna try and get this show up on the air and make it a weekly show so it would be like an hour long and then you would meet people who have had miraculous, wonderful recoveries by eating this way. So watch for it. We're hoping it'll, it'll come to fruition. So, Sherry, a lot of people think that this diet, this way of eating, is a deprivation diet, that we're taking away so much. So maybe talk about all the things that we do eat. Because, oh I, I mean, so just I as, love as a food group. Yes. Yeah. So we're eating full protein. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we eat things that uh, we never feel deprived. And I don't even call it a diet. I call it a lifestyle. Because we're not, this is not a temporary thing. This is my life. So, can I give you like a day's worth of what I might eat so you understand maybe what, what it's like for me? So every morning, 
I, I use what's called an Instant Pot. Does anybody have that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I love my Instant Pot, I love it. And so steel cut oats are probably one of the best things you can put into your body to start the day. So I say to my husband, Dale, as I'm laying in bed, hey, Dale, can you put the oats on? So he's up earlier, so he puts them on. Uh, I make my own homemade almond milk because I don't want stuff that has chemicals in it. It's easy to make. It's in my book. Whoever wins it gets the recipe there. Um, and he makes that. I put flax seeds in there, ground flax seeds. They have to be ground, otherwise they won't do any good. They go right through you. And that's, that gives you your omega-3s, and everybody thinks you have to have fish to get them. No, you don't. You can get it from flax seeds. I put turmeric into my oatmeal, a quarter teaspoon. Why turmeric? Does anybody know what's the, what is the quality of turmeric that's healthy for us? <laughs> Well, what does it do for us? <laughs> it's for inflammation. It's an anti-inflammatory. So that's good for arteries. It's also good for any autoimmune diseases to, to decrease inflammation. Um, I also put in cinnamon. Cinnamon. Um, I get I get ground turmeric. Ground. So cinnamon. And black pepper, believe it or not, you, you put black pepper into your oatmeal, just shake a little in, it enhances the effect of the turmeric. Who would have known? <laughs> and then we eat it every day. Lunch, I make wonderful soups, especially in the winter. So in the winter, you'll see me in the kitchen with a pot this big, and I'll make enough, I'll eat that the whole week. For, the whole week I'll have that for lunch. But we also eat salads, we eat wraps, like, Pumice wraps, like that pumice you had, you could make that on a wrap and throw a lot of veggies in. We eat a lot of fresh fruits. Um, and for dinner, we might have, we love pasta, but we don't eat white pasta because that's all sugar. That is not good for anybody. But if you eat whole wheat or brown rice pasta and make a wonderful marinara sauce, and you can top it with that nutritional yeast they were talking about and a big salad, you're good to go. And we might top it off with some banana ice cream, we call it. We freeze bananas in the freezer, throw them into a blender, put maybe a drop of almond milk and some cinnamon, and it becomes like ice cream. And so we're never deprived of anything. There's so many foods I can't cook them all. All those cookbooks time. over there. What's that? All those cookbooks over there. Yeah, we have a display of our favorite cookbooks over there, too. If you want to take a look at them. Yes, sir. What's the difference between plant-based and vegan? And, and veganism? Right. Oh, what, that is the best question. I love that. That's an important question. So if you are a vegan, that just means you're not eating animal foods. But you might be eating processed foods. You might be eating potato chips. I mean, that's a vegetable, right? but they're doused in oil. You might be eating a lot of processed foods, like Oreo cookies, they're vegan, but these are not health foods. We want just foods, so plant-based people avoid those kind of things. We don't want that junk in our body. We don't want chemicals in our body. We don't even eat the fake meats that they sell, and they're pretty popular now. But if you read the ingredient list, I always say, if you can't pronounce what's on the back of the label, don't put it in your body, right? So that's, that's the difference, that we are, we look at whole foods. Vegans eat a lot of junk food. Yes. yes. You mentioned a few food items um, that I find out are not good if you're on a renal diet. What's like that? oatmeal. Uh, oat. So I would, I would say that, uh, I, I'm not, I can't answer that question, what but I'm not a physician or a dietitian. You can have old, uh, old fashioned old. Once in a great while. And I'm not sure what the reasoning is for that. The, uh, What's the question? What's what was the question? The well, even though you put the mic there, oh, so if it's the potassium? Potassium is high in the potassium, which the kidneys cannot. Okay, so I guess what I would say to you is that I would be very interested to hear what a doctor who practices lifestyle medicine would say about that. There's a lot of things that um, I think we need to be our own advocate and question and understand the research behind it. So I would suggest, you know, getting a second opinion even. If you wanted to, you could talk to another type of doctor who practices food as medicine. But I can't really answer specifically about that potassium for you. Yes. I have not heard the question. The question was I can't eat oatmeal because of the high potassium, because of the renal diet. I had never heard that before. 
That's true. I'd like to make an excellent suggestion for anyone who's curious about nutrition, and that is to go to the website, Google the name Barbara O. Neal, N-E-I-L-L. She has on the YouTube about 50 different lectures that I would have given anything to have taken when I went to college because she was a surgical nurse, She's raised, homeschooled six children, some of which had very difficult vision problems and other problems. She's remarried now and has like 13 children because the other, the husband she married owns this fitness center which she worked at for 15 years. And when he lost his wife, he chose her to run it. So if you are at all interested, just Google that and see what you think. What's the matter? So I want to show you a book here that is fabulous because I'm all about research. I'm not about opinions and, you know, I don't want people to just tell me something without facts to back it up. So this book, written by Dr. Michael Greger, Gregor, yeah. is called How Not to Die. Dr. Gregor, where did he go to school? Cornell or Harvard or one of those schools. He was an Ivy League trained physician. Brilliant man. He's devoted his life now to doing research on nutrition. Mm -hmm. And he looks up every study that has ever been published on the subject. So he is thorough. And he talks about every disease in here, from heart disease to cancers. Here's kidney disease. Hold on. There's kidney disease, everything. It's a fabulous book. This book, how many of you have heard of the China study? This is also a must read. I can't, I can't quite see that far. Can you read the title? The it's China called study. The China Study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Now, I am uh, certified through his program through Cornell University in plant-based nutrition. And some of our other people here, Judy, you are as well. Uh, we've taken his course. He did... Um, this is the first long-term uh, long nutritional study that was done in China, and it looks at disease rates according to diet in that country. And would you believe it, that in China, when this study took place, heart disease rarely existed because the cholesterol level of the people in China, because they mainly plant-based diets in the rural areas of China, was non-existent. Mm -hmm. They didn't have heart disease. Their cholesterol was between 90, I think, 120, that was the tops, but that was their normal cholesterol. Yeah, their, so their top is like our low. Pardon me? Their top was like our low. Yes, their top was our low. So I would suggest both of these books, just to educate yourself and be curious. Obviously, don't trust me. You know, get, do the research yourself and read about it. It's fascinating. Yes, now, a, a couple times uh, I hear people say that sometimes they get hungry on the diet. Should they just be eating more? Is, is that yeah, well, the beauty of eating a plant-based diet is you eat until you're full. You don't have to worry about gaining weight. I haven't gained a pound since I've been on this diet. I stay the same. And do I eat a lot, Dale? Yes. <laughs> I eat a lot and I eat often. So it's just what do we eat, okay? So you need to fill yourself up. And you don't have to worry about counting calories or any of it. Just enjoy. So like if you're hungry, you can eat like... Did anyone ever take grapes and put them in the freezer? Oh, sure. They're so good. So have a snack, you know? Have some hummus on vegetables if you're hungry in between meals. And fill up and don't worry about it. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, Sherry, gets you next. Yes. This is by me again. I'm just afraid. 95% blockage in that order. 99%. 99. Did you clear totally with diet or did they put a stent in? No sense. I had bypass surgery. Oh. So the artery was left alone, okay. and they bypassed it with another artery to go to the heart, but that artery sloughed off. It's, it was fired, gone. It's not, it's not doing anything now. It's gone. And my artery is now clear. Every artery is clear in my body. No, one more question. Okay. okay. I wanted to make a couple of comments, and then I, my question is after. Sure. Um, that Andrew Zimmon um, had a three-part series on TV just recently about um, what's killing America. And they went through the soil and the water and the fish and everything in the Great Lakes and that. 
but what's killing everything. And um, my girlfriend lives in Montana, and she does soil crawls, where they go to different parts of the state and test the soil. Okay, here's my question now to you. Um, how are you preventing eating so much fungicide or spray stuff that they're spraying on our food along with the soil and the water? I'm sorry to <laughs> overload you. No, I mean, that's, that's an excellent question. We haven't talked anything about the environmental impact of our food choices, right? So I eat basically organic food because I am very aware that there are chemicals and preservatives sprayed onto our food all over the place. It's very interesting, a fact you may not know about rice, for instance. I only buy rice that's been grown in the state of California. Why in the U.S.? Because the rice that's grown in the southern part of this country, down in the south, is laced more with arsenic, believe it or not. And the rice grown in California has lesser amounts of arsenic. Now our body can handle a little bit, but it's, it's a poison. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very conscious and aware of where my food comes from and what kind of soil it's grown in. Uh, so does that answer some of your question? So it uh, kind of has to be all organic. In other words. Well, it doesn't have to be all organic. There's something called the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. If you Google it on your phone, it shows you which foods are more laced with, with the types of uh, toxic chemicals. Yeah, th that's from the... 15 and the Dirty Dozen. Yeah, the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org. Yes, ewg.org. But I think too we have to remember that when EWG, we use yeah. things like animal products, that they take up so much of our resources in terms of the grains they're fed and the land that it takes to raise a cow or chicken or and water that they use and what you can produce to feed people on that same plot of land if it's all vegetables, it's crazy. You could feed the world. We would have no more hunger in this world if we stopped using our land to feed the animals because it takes so many resources. That's right. To, to that point, there's another cookbook up on the stage called <laughs> More With Less Cookbook, which does have some meat. It was actually, possibly it's a Church of the Brethren thing or a Mennonite thing, I can't remember. Yeah. It goes back so long. When we got married, we each had a copy of the cookbook. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's something like 14 pounds of grain for every pound of meat. That's yes, correct. 14 pounds of grain for every pound of meat, yes. Yeah, if I can make one comment too, because Michael Greger, Dr. Michael Greger, who um, Sherry already alluded to, that uh, is that nutritionfacts.org, um, How Not to Die, he authored that book, but he's got this phenomenal website called nutritionfacts.org, and, and he has over 2,000 five or six minute videos on there where he talks about the research on different topics and, and excellent, excellent resource. At any rate, some of his topics are about the impact of all of the pesticides and herbicides and all that stuff on our food. And yes, they are a risk factor, but he says, he's very emphatic about that. He says, he says when they look at the studies between the people who are eating organic versus non-organic, eating organic, is it working? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, be oh, yeah. <laughs> between eating organic and not organic, he, he said, yes, there is a certain percentage that you are increasing your risk by eating foods that have the pesticides, but never, not ever, uh, not have a vegetable or fruit because of your risk, because you're concerned about that risk. Just eat more of the plant-based foods. Because he said the, the, the uh, nutrients and the anti-inflammatories and all that sort of thing that you get from the plant-based foods help to fortify your body against the impact of the toxins that are, are pervasive in our, our culture. So, um, yeah, don't, if you, if you can get organic, wonderful. If you can't, eat more vegetables. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That, that's right. The body uh, has a tremendous ability to take care of those things when you feed it better foods, mm -hmm. right? Okay, we're probably almost out of time, so is, I'll take any more, one more question if anybody has any more questions. Do you ever eat meat? Do I ever eat meat? I haven't had a piece of meat since I went plant based, and it's been nine, nine years ago. Do and I? You don't miss it. Oh my God, no. <laughs> I mean, and you save you know, a lot of money, too. You save a lot of money. A can of beans is not really expensive. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Okay, so we're going to do the drawing for my book. And my 
any workers that whoever wins this book today, please pass it forward, share it with other people, because that is, this is my mission now, to not have anyone ever go through what I had to go through with my heart attack and recovery. It is not a place anybody wants to be in. So with that said, get your tickets out. I will, Dale, you want to come up here and pick the winning ticket? Sure. I didn't put mine in. <laughs> okay. And the winner is... All right, nine, one, three, three, six, six. Nobody? That's way six, six. Did you win? All right. All right. There you go. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. It's called, my book is called Stay Alive. Healing from Heart Disease, a Survivor Story. It's on Amazon. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much.